good day all the way from the United Kingdom so and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Obiana Jokrish and I am a mom YouTuber based in the UK. So in today's episode, I'm going to be talking about all you need to do once you arrive in the UK. So stick with me, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't subscribed to it and if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for the good you always do. I really do appreciate your presence here. So in this video, depending on the kind of visa you come with, be it a spousal, a settlement, or a work visa, or even a student visa, this video is very, very essential to you. Please share this video to anyone you know that needs this information dearly. So without further ado, let us jump into the video. All I'm going to be talking about is definitely going to be in no particular order. So the first thing you need to do once you move to the UK is to change the money you come with. So let's take for example, you came in from Nigeria. You need to uh, make sure you change the money you have from Naira to Pounds. It is very, very essential you do that because you need to be able to transport yourself you need to be able to eat like you need to buy what you have to eat you need to be able to do some certain things with your money be it going out to catch fun or whatever thing it might be so you just need to change your money from naira or from whatever currency you're coming with to pounds because no one is going to accept your local currency so that is the first thing you need to do make sure you change your money from the currency you're coming with to pounds the second thing you need to do is to get a telephone number so you know that when you arrive a country newly you want to be able to tell you know your, the people back home or your family members that oh finally i have been able to get to the UK. you need to contact them you also need them to contact you just in case they need to pass on information to you you also need the number because um, you're probably going to be getting a job you're probably going to be registering with your gp probably going to be doing some other things so you need whoever you are dealing with to be able to contact you so you need to get a telephone number if you don't know how to get a telephone number just walk into any store like asda sainsbury lidl tesco whatever thing and just get um a telephone number there there are different types so if you want the very cheap ones you could go for things like givegaf tesco mobiles yes those ones are very cheap but i think the only um bad part of it is that their network coverage might not really be good but if we need like the very good ones you could do things like vodafone um free and so on so once you get them you obviously want to be able to make calls and all so you can decide whether to go for the contracts or go for pay as you go so if you're using the pay as you go what that means is you know like back home let's take for example nigeria where you have to buy like um credits to top up your phone yeah so that is what pay as you go is so you'll be able to make international calls you'll be able to reach whoever you want to and once your credit finishes you have to buy another top up and if you're going to be using like the contract part of it so contract part of it is that you have to agree on a bundle you would be doing so let's say for example you want to do like the 10 pound big bundle so what that means is that you can call any number in the uk for free you can text for free you know but your data your internet data has to be limited so they'll give you a particular amount let's say they give you um three gig and once that finishes <laughs> you have to top up you have to do you have to buy another one yes let me put it like that you have to buy another one and they don't come cheap so if i were you if you're doing like the contract you just have to manage it and stick to it until the month comes to an end so you have to get a sim card once you move to the uk then the next thing you have to do is to get an accommodation once you arrive the uk so let's take for example you are not coming to stay with someone you need to get an accommodation so before you move the first thing you want to do is probably just get the apps look at it and know your way around the app generally so if you're looking for accommodations like shared apartments and all you would need to visit visit websites or apps like sharedroom.com.uk this is not a sponsored video just in case you're wondering so you can do like the sharedroom.co.uk um basically what this app does is that they help to show you accommodations shared accommodations that you could share with 
people that is very very good because those could those people could be like the first set of people you ever get to talk to and eventually they can become like your friends for life and they can save you all the depression that comes with moving to a new environment and if you're looking to getting like a flat or a house you could check websites like rightmove.com so you want to check these apps just in case you're looking for an accommodation i mean it's not just about looking for accommodation of course you need a place where you can also lay your head every day you go out and you come in or even a place you can keep your things i know that yes for most people they come and they stay with families and friends but eventually you might want to move out so these apps i've mentioned are obviously a good way to start with when you move to the youth the third thing you need to do when you arrive in the uk is opening a bank account so you want to be able to open a bank account just in case you want to work right nobody is going to pay you cash in this country except maybe it's an agreement with whoever you know you're working with except it's an agreement with your employer or you know it's just an agreement with your employer but most of the times no one is going to pay you cash so you need an account and an account is the only thing that your money can be moved into another reason why you move and you need an account is because you might want to do like a direct debit or transfer probably to your landlord or to whoever or to your friend or whoever so an account is very very essential just in case you want to be able to receive money next thing you want to get when you arrive the uk is a driver's license so getting a provisional driver's license is the easiest thing you can get once you move to the uk reasons i said that is because that is a way for you to be able to give your proof of identity yes so getting it doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be able to drive it's just a way for you to give like a proof of identity if you're looking for a job if you need to open an account you need to provide the proof of id and a proof of address so getting a provisional driving license is one of those things that you need to show whether to your employer or whether to um opening a bank account it is very very essential and again it doesn't mean that you'll be able to drive once you get the proof of id if you if you get the proof of id and you want to drive you obviously have to have someone who has been driving in the uk for three years and above or you have to pass like your driving test so a driver's license is very very essential and the next point is once you move to the uk once you arrive in the uk the next thing to do is register with a gp so who is a gp a gp is your general practitioner so we obviously have like um health health centers yes health centers around like wherever you're going to stay and um you don't know what is going to happen with the kind of condition weather conditions that we have in this place you might just wake up one morning and you fall sick without even knowing so registering with the gp is very very essential it is also essential because you don't want to be paying for your medical bills by yourself so if you're registered with your gp all you need to do is bring your gp and they are going to probably give you a guide of what to do if you are sick and again yeah in this country if you need an appointment when you're sick the first thing you're going to be asked is who is your gp so if you don't know what to do when you arrive in uk and you need a gp everything you need about this country is on the internet just go to the internet and type how to get a gp in my location or how to get a gp around my vicinity they are obviously a lot of them are obviously going to come out just choose the one closest to you walk into the healthcare center and tell them you want to register with the gp they are going to give you a form and you're going to fill them and that's why i said getting the phone number is essential because obviously you're going to be putting your number there for them to be able to reach you so basically what your gp does is that your gp follows up with you health wise they help you to you know reach whatever department you need to reach whenever you are sick and also getting a gp once you get into this country is very very essential then the last thing you need to get from my own perspective is an n i don't know what an n i is n i is national insurance number so you need to get an n i that way the government knows that you're paying your tax and all and of course no one is going to employ you if you don't have an n i so you need to get an n i as soon as possible once you arrive the uk so 
I think basically that's all for now. That's all you need to know once you arrive to UK. If there's any other thing that I've forgotten to put for you to know once you arrive to UK, I'm going to be putting it in the comment section. So be sure to look at the comment section if and if you ever get to watch this video. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And for those of you that I mentioned that I did my wig for the first time, this is the wig I did the first time. So thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed this one. And I hope this video was helpful to you. Please, please, please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't. That way you're able to know all the UK posts I'm going to be putting up on my channel. Thank you again once more and remain blessed. I will see you in my next one. Until then, bye.